Welcome to Spiritual Awakening Radio. My name is James Bean. The title of today's Satsang podcast is Awakening from the Soul Slumber of the Ages. Rumi said, The breeze at dawn has secrets to tell you. Don't go back to sleep. You must ask for what you really want. Don't go back to sleep. People are going back and forth across the door sill, where the two worlds touch. The door is round and open. Don't go back to sleep. Rumi translated by Coleman Barks in The Essential Rumi. On today's edition of Spiritual Awakening Radio, Awakening from the Soul Slumber of the Ages. The attention faculty of the soul usually remains dormant in most people, what some call the blind eye. Mystics portray the typical materialistic society as being a place of sleeping souls, unaware of their true identity as soul, unaware of their true nature and often are even misled by religious voices that speak about a million topics, but unfortunately, how to see and hear spiritually is usually not one of them. Tulsi Sahib once said, through the ritualism of the pundit, the whole world has been deluded. Wake up, wake up, has been said for ages. For ages and ages, aeons and eons, the soul has slept. Who but the saints can wake it? And, says Kabir, for millions of years you have slept. This morning, will you not wake? This is from Sant Tukarama of Maharashtra. They're not mystics because they write poetry, not saints because they're related to a saint. Their names and costumes don't matter. Only those who face the enemy in battle are brave. They're not mystics just because they play instruments and drape an ascetic's blanket over their shoulders or sing and recite scriptures. Reading the Vedas and performing rituals does not make them saints. Penances, pilgrimages, and living in forests makes no one a mystic. Beads, cast marks, and smeared ashes, these don't make a saint. If they don't forget the body, says Tuka, they're just people of the world. Forget the body here refers to, in other words, being able to transcend the material realm via a contemplative meditation practice. Understand what is in front of you and what is hidden from you will be disclosed to you. For there is nothing hidden that will not be manifested nor buried that will not be raised. Know what is in front of your face and what is hidden from you will be disclosed. There is nothing hidden that will not be revealed. A saying of Jesus found in the Coptic Gospel of Thomas, as well as its parallel in the Oxyrhynchus Greek edition of the Gospel of Thomas, about seeing the hidden realms, the unseen. O soul held captive by the sleep of the ages. The following is from the Shabdavali, the mystic hymns of Sant Tulsi Sahib of Hathras. Wake thou lost in slumber. 
A warning is given here against the lethargy of neglecting one's spiritual life and liberation. Life is fleeting, death is fast approaching, and yet time is going to waste. Says Sant Tulsi Sahib, wake up, wake up has been said for ages, but not once did he wake, not once did he awake. How shall he ever find the essence? For ages and ages he has slept, who but the saints can wake him? He has fallen into the net of delusion. Who can release him from this bondage? Whosoever talks wisely to him, he listens not a whit. Through the ritualism of the pundit, the whole world has been deluded. Wake up, wake up, has been said for ages, but not once did he wake. Wake, O oh traveler, why do you sleep? The night has already ended. Whosoever sleeps loses all. Whosoever wakes is blessed with great good fortune. One who has forgotten the master and the secret of his primal home, he struts about in the world, unfortunate that he is. Worldly attachments hold him fast in their grip. What evil days are in store for him? You come to know the essence of human birth and lose not this golden opportunity. Break all your shackles and get deliverance from the ceaseless cycle of birth and death, transmigration or reincarnation. Swim across this turbulent ocean of samsara, O Tulsi. Be thou a swan, leave the filth of the crow. It is dawn, wake, awake, you who are drowning in sleep so deep. Dark clouds are gathering, a storm is brewing. The watchman yells, the night is over. Those who have awakened are now rid of their fever. Those who still are lying asleep, their house is being burgled. The five and the twenty-five have made your house their abode. They know no mercy, devoid of compassion are they. Mine and thine are violently pushing you to and fro. Against them, you are completely helpless and weak. The three attributes are at your door. They themselves are demanding. They hold in their hands the rope of deceitfulness. They never stop those who come and go. They do not listen to any of your entreaties. Leave, O oh leave, this habitation once and for all, O oh Tulsi. The mind here is but a puppet, and the ruler, the archon, the negative power, the Kal Naringen, is blind. Sant Tulsi Sahib, Book of Shabdavali. Wake thou, lost in slumber. Some footnotes I have here about leaving this habitation once and for all. Dying while living. Death before dying. Die while living. Dying by way of meditation. A popular saying or variations of a popular saying used by Sants and Sufi poets espousing the view that rising above body consciousness or soul travel during meditation practice is a preparation or rehearsal for the afterlife. Hazrat Sultan Bahu said, let us die before dying, O Bahu, only then is the Lord attained. So here, in other words, the practice of meditation that leads to rising above body consciousness, as Kirpal Singh described it so well in his teachings, is a kind of dress rehearsal for the afterlife a taste of the kingdom of the heavens here and now by way of contemplative meditation. The Sant Sat Guru out of his grace impresses upon all to engender love in the feet of the Supreme Lord. 
who is all the time present within everyone. He enjoins upon them to proceed inwards by the practices of Surat Shabad Yoga, inner light and sound meditation, which they should perform as far as they can with all sincerity and love in this very life, and thus make it easy to some extent to traverse the path which they will have to tread at the time of death, and thus see things with their own eyes. A quote from Hazur Maharaj Rai Salagram Bahadur from Volume 1 of Prim Patra Radhaswami, which is a book, if you translate that into English, The Spiritual Love Discourses of the Lord of the Soul, Volume 1. Kirpal Singh said, Do your meditation, for in meditation lies the true thing which has permanent value. This is also from Sant Telsi Sahib of Hathras, Concentration of the Soul. Fear of death can be conquered through concentration of the soul at the eye center, the third eye. Ultimately, this leads to union with the Supreme Lord. Whosoever has concentrated his soul has been redeemed from the fear of death. She, the soul, has ascended the firmament, the heavens, with force, and has found refuge at the feet of the Lord. She has taken abode in the infinite region and has attained union with the Beloved. Indeed, O Tulsi, she has been delivered from delusion, suffering, and the fever of countless lives. I'm reaching for my copy of the teachings of Goswami Tulsi Das, starting with Page 106. Wake up, O foolish soul, wake up. Remain vigilant in this night of the world. This love for your body and home is as transient as lightning in clouds. While slumbering, you suffer the agonies of the world, like drowning in the waters of a mirage or being bitten by a snake which in reality is a rope. The Vedas and the wise ones declare, and you too know within your mind, that the misconceptions and suffering experienced in dreams vanish only upon awakening. Likewise, says Tulsi, the threefold suffering of the world disappears only upon awakening and only then can arise pure and natural love for God's name. And another bhakti poem from the teachings of Goswami Tulsi Das. It is difficult to perform devotion to Lord Ram. It is easy to talk about, but enormously difficult to practice. Only he who has accomplished this task knows what it involves. Whosoever is adept in an art, for him that art is easy and ever enjoyable. A little fish swims against the current of the Ganges, while a mighty elephant is carried away by it. Or just as when sugar is mixed with sand, no one can separate it by applying force, but a tiny ant, endowed with an accurate sense of taste, picks it out without any effort. 
Likewise, a true yogi easily rests in peace, discarding the sleep of ignorance and dissolving the entire visible world within himself. He alone, being utterly detached from duality, experiences the highest bliss of the Lord's lotus feet. For him, there is no pain, there is no pain or pleasure, fear or delusion, no day or night and space or time. Unless this state is realized, says Tulsi Das, doubts can never be totally uprooted. mystic verses of Tulsi Das, he refers to the repetition of God's name as a form of bhakti, or love and devotion for the Supreme Being, remembrance for the Supreme Being by repeating his name. Dadu Dayal of Rajasthan said, repeat the name of your beloved day and night again and again. With care in thought, word and deed, you will cross to the other shore. In the teachings of the Sants of India, many names are mentioned, depending on the branch, depending on the school of spirituality, depending on which lineage of Sant Mat or Radhaswami you are encountering. The mystic verses of all these Sants collectively say, repeat the name of Ram. Repeat the name of Radhaswami. Repeat the name of Hari. Repeat the name of Govinda. Repeat the name of Vithala. Repeat the name of Allah. Repeat the name of Hu. Ekonkar Satnam. Many names have been used by various sants for the Supreme Being. The name that the Master who initiates you at the time of initiation. That's referred to by some as the Guru Mantra, the name that your master imparts, and that is the most special name of all, the spiritually charged words that the master gives. few excerpts from talks by Sant Kirpal Singh from Science of the Soul magazine. The human body is a precious asset granted to you all. It is the highest rung in God's creation. The highest object of this earth life in human form is to realize our own selves and then realize God. It is such a noble task which only can be accomplished in the human form. Soul is a conscious entity, a drop of the ocean of all consciousness, and in its miniature capacity carries all the divine attributes of Godhood. Since it is environed by mind and matter, it has lost its heritage and forgotten its origin, the true home of the Father. The Master has come to our help to awaken us from this long slumber of ignorance. All the past Masters, including Christ, have been stressing the importance of this inner development of soul. An unbiased study of scriptures will reveal to you that the Masters have been coming to this earth planet in all ages for the guidance and deliverance of child humanity. As it says in the Gurbani, the Sikh scriptures, 
Devotion to the Gurumukh, through which the sound is heard without effort. He who does the Gurumukh Bhakti has reverence for the teachings of a living master, a Sant Sat Guru, gets light in the heart from that love. Kirpal Singh, it means that the light sprouts forth from within. Copies of the light are found in outer places of worship, but for want of someone to show the inner light, the outer light has become all important and the inner light forgotten. In the olden days, a five, seven, or nine-year-old child would be main Davija, which means he received the second birth. In olden days, a five, seven, or nine-year-old child would be made Davija, which means he received the second birth. The first birth, of course, is being born into the physical form, and the second birth is into the beyond. The child was then given the Gayatri or Gayatri mantra, and he was taught to practice the rays of the sun within and become one with the all light. At this initiation, they were also given a demonstration of this, but now only the outer custom remains. They speak of the second birth and give the Gayatri mantra, but there is no light. This is no new idea I am placing before you. The holy initiation into the mysteries of the beyond is a unique start for further development. Most of you have been blessed with this rare gift of heavenly nature with the grace of the Master. Now it is up to you to develop it from day to day by regular faithful and accurate meditations. I am glad that most of you have been devoting regular time for your holy meditations and enjoying inner bliss and harmony. I wish you more of success in your ventures. The inner divine links of light and sound are most helpful for controlling the senses. If you will follow these divine principles, the inner change of life will follow automatically. Truth is above all, but higher still is true living. You should love one another so that others may see and know for themselves that you belong to the Master. God is love, and love is God. The way back to God is also through love. You should also remember this divine principle that love begets love. The Father is always pleased to see the loving children laying their heads together for the common holy cause of the Master. The following is a discourse from Baba Ram Singh. Swamiji Maharaj says, That ocean of Nam is within you. The light and sound are within you. So you gather your attention to the back of the eye center and drink from that ocean. Masters say that this is a very unique body that you have in which God Almighty has kept all 16 planes of life forms. He has kept all his treasures within you, within this body, and he is also sitting and residing within this body. So if you follow the teachings of the masters and sit for meditation for two and a half hours daily, you will leave all your nine doors outside and come inside, come within and open your tenth door. Then you will see for yourself all of these things within you. The soul is a princess and it is the princess from Sachkhand, Satlok. As such, she is someone who can come and give to this whole world and provide for this whole world. But instead, she has come here, lost her way, and now she is attached to desires for providing food and shelter for herself. So masters caution us and awaken us, saying, come inside, 
See within yourself and you will realize that you have come here to give to this world. You are not a person who has to ask and beg from this world. You are not a person who has to ask and beg from this world. From the teachings of Baba Ram Singh. today. This is from a discourse of Swami Vyasanand. The formless pervades the form. The realm of light is the manifestation of the form of the macrocosmos or Brahmananda. And the sound is the formless macrocosm. The practitioner who becomes accomplished in the light realms begins to experience divine sound along with various divine light experiences. However, after the center of Trikuti, the center of Brahma Jyoti, the light form becomes absorbed in the sound that is formless since the form arises out of formless. According to the natural law, anything that is created must return to its source and be dissolved therein. The meditation on the sound is formless and transcends the realm of name and form. Through this meditation, the practitioner reaches the Supreme Being. Through this path, the meditator goes beyond all obstacles and achieves the ultimate freedom from the cycle of birth and death. The practitioner becomes free from taking birth in this world. The practitioner whose consciousness grasps the central sound, even once, escapes the afflictions of time and death. This practice of meditation is the direct path, as was stated by the Prophet Muhammad. By treading this path, the practitioner reaches the untainted destination of Kuda, a word for God in Urdu, or the realm of the Supreme. This path of meditation is described by Jesus as the eye of the needle, and by going through it, one attains the kingdom of heaven. This is the path leading to Nirvana, as described in Jainism and Buddhism. This is the unstruck sound, the unhad shabd, revealed by Guru Nanak, which is heard by closing the ears and the eyes. This meditation is the essence of all the different religions, all sacred texts, and the core message of all saints and sages. This meditation takes the practitioner to the ultimate goal. Without this meditation, the existence of any religion, sect, or path is incomplete says Swami Vyasanand. In conclusion, as Kabir says in his mystic poetry, for millions of years you have slept. This morning, will you not wake? <laughs>